Hello YouTube, this is a video on how to pick up Morse and Teletype uh, the old-fashioned way for idiots because I've never done this before so let's see whether we can get this working now what we've got is a radio this is an ICOM as you'll see here an ICOM IC 706 Mark II G now it only needs to be a receiver if you're not intending on transmitting so for this video all we'll be doing is receiving and decoding Morse and other things so antenna tuner only if you're going to transmit so that isn't actually required and over here we have a machine that was basically going to get scrapped and this is just to show you how you can get around these things so um, this machine has two gigs of RAM. I installed a fan on the processor, the memory and the graphics card um, to keep it nice and cool. And then I had a load of items which were given to me, which is why I decided to do this video. This is an Advanced Electronic Applications Incorporated uh, Pack Rat. And I think it's called a Pack Rat um, PK232. That's what the PK stands for, um, or Packet 232. Now, never used one of these before, but I thought I'd connect it up to the computer. So what have we got on the back? Let's have a little look first. And to make it quite easy, what they've got is an audio in for two radios, so you can select between two radios. There's also a special cable, which is a bit of an interesting Thing that I'm not going to probably be able to see in there at the moment but um, that is a special uh, cable and um, then you've got uh, things for keying if you're intending on doing transmitting Morse but we're not so anyway this is an RS-232 modem type connection over here and um, this cable comes out and goes in to the computer and it goes into the COM port on the computer. So let's just show you the COM port. Okay, that's one of the COM ports. Looks a little bit like a video port, but it's only got two rows instead of three rows of pins. So you pop that into the COM port. Now these older machines tend to have COM ports. If you haven't got a COM port, you might find that inside here, usually down at the bottom end, there'll be a connector with COM written on it, and you'll have to get a little um, thing that goes on the on the back here which gives you that same connector if you haven't got one and if you haven't got any of that then there is another way you can get yourself a USB to COM adapter which will give you that little port that you need so right we've connected to the computer we powered up the device and the lights have come on now there's uh, let's, let's try it from scratch we'll turn it off we turn it on and let's have a look at what happens to the lights now it starts on a thing called uh, Bordeaux, which is um, an old-fashioned way of saying board, because you'll notice the, f the first few um, letters, B-A-U-D, Bordeaux, is um, to do with speed, I believe. It's the speed of rate. Um, and basically, this light over here, I think, has something to do with telling you whether you're getting a signal. So, I've taken a cable, which is an audio cable, and it's just a simple three-pin. I've got the dogs come in to have a look here at what we're up to. So it's a simple three-pin audio cable, and at the other end, there's, there's the other three pins. So it's just simple like that. Now, theoretically, you should need mono, but if your system will allow it, a stereo cable will terminate to mono in some cases. If it doesn't work, it might be because you need a mono cable or a stereo to mono. But anyway, you'll have to work out that for yourself. So let's just put that up here, and let's plug this into the back of this. So you, can, so you can see all we're doing is we're sending the data to the computer and we're sending it an audio signal into here. Okay. Now, I did try this once earlier on, so I kind of know that we're going to get some success, but literally this is the first time I've done it today. So uh, now, you have to download a piece of software on the computer, and as you can see we've got a nice big screen. This is like... 50 inches of uh, computer screen so uh, we're being spoiled for choice here and I don't want to do this update at the moment so let's just get rid of that you need to download from a website called um, putty.org a program called putty so you can see p 
P-U-T-T-Y.org. Okay, so you go and get Putty, and you can download it, it says here. You click that, download it, and you want the basic Putty. You don't want anything clever, so just scroll down, whether you've got a Mac or a whatever you're using, Windows Intel Putty. And it's just that top one there. You know, you don't need any of these. These are for people who want encryption and various things like that. So you don't need that. You just want basic putty. So you download it. And then when it's on your machine, you run it. And you see this little screen that comes up here. And the first screen you come to is a connection screen. And it's basically saying, right then, okay, putty wants to talk. So this, this program here wants to talk to this. How does it do it? Okay. And if you notice up here, it's selected to serial okay I think by default it's set to telnet which means if you've got a broadband connection if you telnet you can telnet through the internet to a very to a distant machine but we don't want that okay because we just wanted to talk to this device down here and that's good old-fashioned serial which is a serial port that's what this thing is called COM1 this little white cable COM1 is called a serial port because it transmits serial data um, the other type of port is a parallel port, which would be the old-fashioned printers, and they had lots of pins in them, but this is serial. So it just means transmit, receive on two, two cables. I think it, that's what it means, serial data. Okay, so anyway, let's not get too confused with that. Um, we're on serial. Now, um, on the front of the device, you remember it said something about bordo. Okay, so I think it's trying to work out what the board rate is. Now, earlier on, I did try to connect it at speed 9600. And that didn't work. So I tried it slower on 4800, and that didn't work. So I tried it even slower at 1200, because this is probably an old device, and radio doesn't transmit incredibly fast. So I typed in 1200 up there, and then down the bottom you press Open. And watch what happens when we do this. Okay, we press Open, and it brings up a nice little screen, and there's a green thing up in the corner, which is the cursor, and there's not much else happening. So what we do is on the keyboard, we press enter okay now down here when you press enter notice every time I press enter the the thing goes around and then all of a sudden when it goes all the way back to the beginning it says please type a star for auto board routine okay please press star on the keyboard for auto board routine now I'd never tried this before so I was I was experimenting and every time I hit the space bar or the enter key it would move the um, the LED across one. So let's have a look at it. Do it now. So I'm hitting Enter. Oh, I did it twice, and it went to FEC Mode L Standby. And then if you do it again, it goes back around. So you go down, 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 and it goes back to the beginning. And every time you do that, and it goes back to the beginning, it says press the star for the board routine. Okay, so we're here now on uh, Bordeaux. So what I'll do is I'll press the star on the keyboard. So I'm going to press star and hit enter. Okay. Now it hasn't done anything at the moment, but so I'm going to press star and enter. All right. Okay. Now it's still saying, it's still saying press star for auto board routine. So I'm going to try the other star, which is shift eight on the keyboard. So I'm going to it's on board, I'm going to do shift 8 and then enter. No. And then we do shift 8. So we do star, star, star. No, star, 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 star. Ah, there we are. Hang on. It says, I did star, 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 and it said PK232 is using default values. So we're into the device. And if I type help. It's a little, a little bit like war games, this. It's like the, the movie War Games, where you're going to start a nuclear war. But what you're doing is you're talking to this box. By typing things in, you're, you're talking through the computer to the box, and then the box will re respond to you. So I'm going to say help to get a list of commands. So help, and there we go. This is how you start a thermonuclear war. Okay, so then you look up here, and the list of commands, what there's navtex which I think is some sort of uh, system on board ships um, fax that's probably for weather fax signal I don't know trans is probably transmit receive or RCVE is receive 
um, T clear probably clears the screen. Um, Xmit probably starts transmitting. Restart probably restarts the machine. Reset resets the machine. And then up here, we've got the modes. What are we going to listen in? So if we tell it what we want to listen in, you just type it and press enter. So at the moment, I want to listen to Morse because that's the easiest one for me to tune into. So let's type Morse. So M. There we are. M. O. R. S. E. And when we hit enter, there we are. It says the mode was packet, but the mode is now Morse. So it's telling you you've gone from packet to Morse. Okay, now this means then, if we look down here, lo and behold, the LED has moved on to the Morse, the Morse section. So it's going to start receiving Morse if we give it an audio signal. So as we said earlier on, we've got our trusty radio here, which can just be a receiver, but it's got to be narrow enough to, to isolate the individual carrier waves or CW signals, otherwise known as Morse. Now, if you listen in, like this is with a narrow filter on, okay, and it helps isolate each individual signal, and you can hear this several talking on top of each other. If I take this filter off, just to show you what it's like without the filter, okay, that's actually it's not too bad. That's not too bad. I might keep the filter off and see what it's like. Now, you want to maybe attenuate your signal. Attenuate the signal, you know, so that you get rid of some of the... Get rid of some of the, um, the hiss. Because when you turn your RF up, you just get loads of squealy noise. So try and isolate it and turn your volume up. And that way you get more... You get more beep... There you go. That's a nice clear signal. So, you might need to tune it up and down. There's somebody else transmitting very close. Can you hear it? So, I'm going to plug in the headphones. Okay, now that then sends the audio down the cable. Now look what's happening now. It's going, it's saying, I can see a signal. You see, now if, if, it, was, if it wasn't loud enough, you might need to turn the volume up a little bit. So you turn the volume up. And if it's too loud, that might start scatting out, so you turn it down. You just adjust it until you start to see, just start to see that little thing doing something there. Okay, and what you can do sometimes as well is you can just gently, gently tune up and tune down. And, you know, basically see if it makes any difference to the signal. So you can see there. So... Now look what's happening up here. Tested. Look. Something's coming through. Tested. UED test. TEVED 90MID 5. And it's just go it's just receiving it. Look, it's receiving stuff. And it's typing it out on the screen. So it's listening to Morse. So let's it's stopped. So that might mean the transmission has stopped. So let's have a listen. So we pull this out. No, I'm going to, I'm going to tune it down, because I think lower pitch is probably better, so let's have a go. Now look, lower pitch, and it's very definite, it's going bop, 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 instead of going bop, 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 in one place, it's jumping between position A, position B, which is good. And guess what, look, it says... Test I T E E E E N Q N E E I U E E question mark E E test testy. So let's let's lock ourselves onto another signal. So you can see how easy this is to do this. Right, so let's lock ourselves onto a nice strong signal. Oh God, listen to that. That's strong. So what's this one saying? It's saying HU7F CQ slash as somebody calling. CQ means calling. HU7F is calling. HU7F HUF. I don't know what this means. I'm not a Morse person. 5RR. 
dot five. This would mean something to somebody who reads Morse because this is code. This is abbreviated codes probably for the location that the person lives and stuff like that. 5RR.5 TV TV mm -hmm. Come on. Does he stop transmitting? TU underscore T Hmm. EU underscore T five N N fifteen T V H U F slash slash means like new sentence, I believe. So this is this is differentiating between so there we are, it's repeating itself now. It's saying H U F C Q seven A seven F G I four V E five R R. You can see a lot of this is re repetition. So, but that's how easy it is. You know, like f it literally took me five minutes of plugging this in to a basic cheap throw-out computer, connecting it with a free software called Putty, um, connecting it to, you know, it can be any old radio as long as you've got a nice strong more signal and whoosh. So, okay, this video has taken sixteen minutes, but. Theoretically, if you weren't trying to film it and explain, this would have been a five-minute setup. For the very first time, it's, I've done this from scratch. I am not an expert. Um, I've only passed my foundation license the other day, and I can see how easy this is. If you wanted to transmit, you would use the um, special cable going into the tra transmit port. There's a special port on the back that will actually press the key and start transmitting. And you can send as well as receive. And then I believe with that special cable, you can actually still hear and use the volume control to hear whilst the data is coming and going. You can still hear it through the front if you want. So that's what you use those cables for. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you find this interesting.